not everybody knows what I've been trying to do the last few years, and that's essentially this. It's a very simple, very subjective, very romantic, very idealistic, iconic representation of the world's last indigenous uh, cultures slash tribes. I'm trying to put these people, what's left of them, on a podium. I'm trying to make us look at them and perhaps see that they have something that they can still teach us. Um, next to that, I'm not the first person to have done this. So when I sort of published my book last year, I wanted to communicate to people that I'm one of many people who've done this before. And this is a very significant individual who I want to share with you. His name is Edward Sheriff Curtis. He's an American photographer who died in the 1960s, but he did a project in America at the beginning of the last century. And for 30 years, I produced one volume book. He produced 30 of the Native American Indians. And essentially, I'm copying him. And he's dedicated the whole second part of his life to putting these people on a pedestal, to making a document of them, to celebrate them, saying they're very, very, very important, and we have to record them, and we have to acknowledge them. Unfortunately, as we now know, 100 years later, these people don't exist. Their descendants do, but their descendants are very far removed from who they were 100 years ago. And it's my humble, perhaps naive, but also romantic opinion that we're worse off as people because we don't have the Native American Indians in a way as they were 100 years ago. So I've tried in a more contemporary way and on an international scale to essentially do the same, to make this celebration. I published this book a year ago, um, and uh, I stood on a stage in uh, Amsterdam in the Concertgebouw, and everything changed. And I think that's part of what I'm here to talk about this morning. Uh, prior to that, I was a, last year I was 46-year-old photographer, spent the whole of my life traveling. Uh, the pictures I'd made, I wasn't necessarily aware of the significance of them, but it was a very passionate urge of wanting to communicate. By standing on the stage at TED, this happened. Uh, eventually, there was a talking face with an idea, an opinion, next to the pictures. So the whole world, essentially, the morning after TED last year, came to me and said, we want your opinion. Uh, can you please come and talk to us? And every single media outlet you can imagine. And the w it's phenomenal how the world has changed is that in that way. As soon as something goes online, and it's vaguely interesting, how everybody can access you instantaneously. And every single television company, media outlet in the world contacted me, and I subsequently started to share my thoughts about it with them. And it led to something quite extraordinary. I've just returned from... A bit harder. The volume needs to go down. More, 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 more. More, more. Further, 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 further. I've just returned... And you can go down further. Uh, a number of television organizations came up to me and said, Jimmy, this whole idea about you returning to the tribes, can we help you do that? So I've set off on a journey, and I've just returned from two of them. This was to Namibia in, uh, uh, on the border of uh, southern Angola, and I went to Vanuatu. There, I, Namibia, I went to with the ZDF in Germany, and Vanuatu with the CNN. And it was essentially, can you take us back to the people who you photographed? Can we make a document? Can we take the story to another level, what do these pictures mean? Not only what do they mean to you, but perhaps what do they mean to, in this case, to the Himba. Um, it was wild. It's the most extraordinary privilege you can ever imagine if you've taken something and to have that dream fulfilled. So we went back and to the beginning, it was very, very quiet and it was complete sort of shock because I'm probably not the first person to have ever photographed them but I was probably the first person to ever come back. So there's this complete, you know, obviously they recognized me when I came back. Who are you? And then with an enormous amount of tears, this sort of complete sort of, wow, you're back, and lots of hugging and everybody running around. And then we actually sat down and we, I sort of showed them the book and we started looking at the pictures. And you saw their backs straighten, you saw their chins raised, you saw them breathe in, you saw the light in their eye. They really realized, and that was the communication we had, they're proud. They realized they were part of something very, very, very special. And then when we got further into the book, and this was part of the discussion beforehand, do you show them pictures of other people on the planet? Do you show them the Himba pictures of people who live in the ice? And when they realized they were part of the world's last uh, relatively untouched indigenous cultures, it was, there was a celebration. It was, it was amazing. And here we are with the, the knee in Vanuatu. I only came back here last week from here. 
And they said, you have to come on the picture with us, with your book. And we made many more pictures. This will be on the CNN, which will be broadcast in about 250 countries next February. Um, but there's a slight problem with this. You go back and everybody's very emotional and I get all very emotional. And then you come back with one book for each group. And then they're all very disappointed because everybody was expecting their own book. <laughs> so sort of getting into a discussion where you're not allowed back unless you all bring us one next time. And this book's sort of quite heavy. So that's sort of the next technical problem. Um, also something which is very humble and I'm extremely flattered about, and I only found out recently, Ted uh, Amsterdam has decided to bring out a book. And the book was based on my talk last year. I don't know whether you could describe it as a talk. It was more of a sort of an emotional uh, um, uh, outburst. And the talk was based on three lessons. And so I want to share with you today and basically bring us all back to what it's all about, what I keep learning from these people and how important they are to us. They're not just fantastic landscapes, fantastic traditions, and hopefully beautiful pictures. There is something very, very profound about them which we have to keep reminding ourselves. And I was back with the Himba. Um, go to the image. And as I explained, it was sort of quite emotional. And one night we were sitting down and we'd sort of probably had a little bit too much to drink and the stars are out and everybody's sort of all a bit sort of uh, gushy. And I looked at the village next to us and as you can see, they have this very big fence around the village and it may not look particularly significant to you, but to the Himba, it's their town hall. It's a very, very substantial structure. And I started talking with the chief when we were chatting when I go, you know, but it's, you know, where's the big fence gone? if I'm right in saying, I may be wrong, but last time there was a big fence here. And he goes, yeah, yeah, we've destroyed it. We've destroyed it. That happens quite a bit. And I was a bit confused. You know, we come from a culture where it's only about further and progression and more and more and more. And he says, no, we had to remove it. And I said, well, can you elaborate? And he said, well, yeah, uh, the big, big chief died. I don't know whether you met him when you came here last time, but he's passed away. And we have a tradition. It's very important when somebody who's very significant passes away, we have to destroy something that they've created. I'm now I'm getting a bit confused. I said, yeah, well, you know, I don't quite understand. Can you elaborate? And he goes, well, it's very, very important we as a community do that because only then can we reflect on what he had uh, created. And again, I'm saying, so the whole village came together and destroyed this town hall around. Yes, because then as a community, we came together to reflect the power and the significance of what he'd done. Then after a period of time, we all came back together and we rebuilt it. We rebuilt that whole structure again as a community. But next time we rebuilt it, we built it even bigger and stronger, the whole time remembering who he was. And then once it was rebuilt, then what we had as a group, as a community, we had enormous respect for who he was. And I found that very powerful. And as I explained, I was a little bit drunk and I started crying and I'll say why. My father died last year. And um, there's been a little bit of family confusion over the last few months, as you can probably imagine. And I remember ringing my mother when I came back from the trip. And I got very excited. And I said, Mom, you know, I said, it was amazing. I was again with a himba. And she was on one of your journeys. And yeah, I've got this fantastic thing happen. We're sitting by the fire. And, you know, Dad died. And, and I told her the story about knocking down the fence and um, remembering him. And she's panicked. She was very English. And you, she went quiet. She said, you're not going to come and destroy the house. <laughs> <laughs> and she's a little bit sort of insecure at the moment. And I was going, no, 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 don't worry. No, the house is going to remain. You know, I'm going to leave you there. What I'm trying to say is on these journeys and through these pictures, which I'm making in a very passionate uh, way, I keep having fantastic experiences and lessons. And there's one lesson that standing here with you now or this morning in the Stadtschauberg, I'm only there because of my father. My father was an Antarctic explorer, and he's only did what he did because of his father, and so on, and so on, and so on. And rather than worrying about perhaps what he had, what could be mine, we have to find a way through lessons like what I learned with the Himba of acknowledging our past, and perhaps we are only who we are because of our, de of our descendants. Uh, thank you. Thank you.